Well, four years ago, a group of conservation-minded farmers formed the Peninsula Pride Farms. Now, during their annual meeting, I sat down with their president, Don Niles, who explained why they felt there really was a need for this organization. As a group of farmers coming together and saying that we were, we were concerned with some of the perceptions of farms, we were, we were concerned that we weren't doing a very good job of communicating what our ethics and what our, our practices really were. And we also were concerned that we as a, as a group hadn't really publicly owned up to our responsibility to help uh, preserve the environment on our peninsula here. Now says that in agriculture, one size does not fit all. That's why they really emphasize the diversity in conservation practices. There's a whole spectrum, and that, that's the neat thing about it. We're coming up with a toolbox for farmers. We're not coming up with a tool. We're coming up with a toolbox. The, the practices that may work on one farm uh, might not be suitable for another farm. It might not fit his equipment or his style or his philosophy or his land. So we want to create a number of tools that producers can use. Uh, for example, cover crops have been um, extremely popular and, and successful with our group. Now, we started out the first year with around 7,000 acres. This year we've had 21,000 acres among our membership. Now, to help finance these practices, the organization is providing cost sharing opportunities. Cover crops are big. Um, we also have a, a cost share this year for split applications of nitrogen. That way we don't put all the nutrients on the soil at one time. It costs a little more to make two trips out to the field at two different times of year. So we're paying a cost share to help the farmer alleviate that cost. Uh, another thing we have cost sharing for is um, buffered grassy waterways to protect sinkholes. If we identify where a sinkhole is, we can put a nice big uh, buffer area there to filter anything before it gets to the, the sinkhole. And then that buffer itself could be harvestable as, as grass for the heifers on the farm. Now, although research is being done in neighboring states and other parts of Wisconsin, Niall says the members were looking for what would work best in their specific region. We're in northern Wisconsin, so just because something worked 100 miles south of here may not work in our climate, so that's what we're trying to do is find the best combinations of the cover crops or the best tilling schedule or non-tilling schedule and, um, and take advantage of that. And Working as a group, we can start working with the implement dealers so they start bringing equipment into our area, knowing that we've got 40 farmers in our group that would be very interested in using and renting that equipment. Uh, so it, it, we kind of create opportunities, and then those opportunities create new best practices. Peninsula Pride Farms has grown quite a bit in less than five years, so I asked where he hoped they would be in the next five to ten years. I would like for Peninsula Pride Farms to be the go-to source of somebody looking for what are the farming practices, uh, what are the reasons behind the farming practices here on the peninsula, what are the visions and the focus of the farmers, and how to tap into that entire resource. We, we want to be able to speak for the farmers as far as their, their ethics and their um, environmental practices, and we want to also be able to, to share the story of dairy production in Kiwani and Southern Door Counties, what it involves, what's gone into our culture, and where we expect it to go from here.